What's going on? Today's episode, I'll be sharing with you guys the ultimate A to Z guide of landmine training. So I could have easily made a lot of separate videos, but I thought I'd condense it all and make it as bang for your buck as possible just for the viewing experience for you guys and give you guys more tools to your toolbox. Because a lot of you guys, especially with regarding quarantine and stuff of that nature, start at home gyms. Maybe you're training in your garage. Maybe you open up a little studio, whatever the case is. Maybe you're training in a commercial gym. It doesn't really matter, but just know that you have more tools in your toolbox. You have more tools at your disposal than you think. And obviously, I always promote the basics. But with that being said, landmine training is also known as a form of barbell training. T-bar rows, landmine presses are still some forms of barbell training, at least to a certain extent. And this could give you a lot of variability in your training. So that way, if you're training in, let's say, a garage gym, you don't have to buy all these fancy machines because you have hundreds of exercises at your disposal just with the landmine alone. And great compound lifts as well, not just some isolation lifts you could throw in here and there. But even if you want those, that could be provided with the landmine. So that's what today's episode is all about. I'll be giving you guys more tools for your toolbox. Do what you want with this video. Do what you want with the exercises. And then let me know in the comment section below if you learned anything. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, what makes the landmine such a unique apparatus in the gym is that it has an anti-rotation component to it, which is basically a fancy way of saying when you're doing a standing exercise like a squat with a landmine, a landmine press, meadows row, whatever the case is, the landmine wants to go left or right. So you have to recruit certain muscles in your core to stabilize that you won't normally recruit during other exercises. It just has a different line of pull and due to the nature of landmine exercises, it's just a very unique animal and people who've done landmine lifts know what I'm talking about. So there's a lot of core benefits and also just very cheap overall. You don't have to invest that much in a landmine. It probably costs you under a hundred bucks. You can put on some cinder blocks so it'll be a bit higher like I'm doing and you have tons of different variations. So we're starting off with the presses. I'm just showing you guys landmine presses and the cool thing about landmine presses for example is that not everybody has the ability to press overhead without going into massive amounts of hyperextension. So you can start off with like a half kneeling press, then go to tall kneeling, then go to a split stance, then go to a regular conventional stance for your presses. Now, as far as other variations, you could do the one arm clean and press as I'm doing now. It's a very unique animal overall. You could do this for conditioning work, you could use this as a finisher, but these are not main lifts for the most part. Sure, some people could use the Viking press as a main exercise, but for the most part, these are accessories or these are assistance exercises, and you have to plug them in accordingly. You could also do the Z press with the landmine. You could do lateral raises. You could do rear delt work. So you could do other parts of your shoulders. You get the front raise, the front delt gets work from the presses. Then you do other raises just to give you some variability in your training. Now, you could obviously do a lot of compound lifts with the landmine, but don't think it's just compounds. You could also work with some isolation lifts as well, such as extensions for your tries, do curls for your biceps. Here I'm doing a one arm floor extension, and the line of pull is just different. You get a different contraction. That's not really a word you're going to hear me say too much on this channel, but it's true. You have a different stimulation, and you just feel the muscle in a different way. So if you want to. If you're one of those lifters who like variety and you're into getting different kind of contractions, maybe you're into bodybuilding, it's a good tool. If you're into grip training, you could do some pinching work, one arm, two arms. And now let's talk about some back training. So you could do some shrugs with this as well. You just grab onto a rope and this will give you a different line of pull, like very different from a bar basic barbell shrug. You could also do basically one arm shrugs, a landmine, you could do meadows, one arm shrugs. These are just lifts that you could add into your toolbox for more variety. Now, if we're talking more about back training, let's talk about rows. You notice that I have my arm, the opposite arm in more of an alternating fashion. This translates very well to gait and athletics. So as opposed to just having the arm by the side or just taking the arm, the, the non-working arm and putting it on my knee, I rather have it in an alternating fashion. This will give me a more mobile rib cage. Basically, it'll help me move better. Now, if we're talking about lower body training, you could do the one arm RDL with a split stance. You could do the Meadows RDL. And notice my other arm is still working. I'm not just keeping it by my side. I have that alternation in the mix. Now you could do some front loaded uh, squatting variations. It's a good finisher for high reps. You could do like four sets of 25 on this. Really fry your quads. And you could also do some reverse lunges as well. Now keep in mind this is a thicker handle so it's gonna work your grip. I actually made a video on this a while back regarding the belt squat, 
ideally you want to get on some higher boxes so you can go deeper this is great to spare the low back and you could also do reverse lunges with a one arm zercher this is great for getting that posterior rib cage expansion all right so there you guys have it that's landmine training 101 the a to z guide let me know in the comment section below if you got any value out of today's episode. Did you learn anything new? Did you get a new exercise you're gonna start adding into your toolbox? What exercise are you gonna try this week that you learned from this video? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you guys next time.